In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, after having viewed my last video on souls in purgatory, many people send me questions and doubts. Many Hindus and Muslims wrote and asked to me, is salvation the monopoly of Christians? In other words, is heaven only for Christians? Here I bring before you two stories of the Bible, two parables of the Holy Bible. One is about the workers in the vineyard. We know a certain man sent workers to the vineyard early morning. And afterwards, he found some people idle in the marketplace. He told them also to go and work. And thus four times, that means nine hour, eleven hour, and in the afternoon, he sent workers to the vineyard. And the evening came, and workers were paid equally. The one who worked from morning till evening, and the one who worked only one hour, who came late, also received the same salary, same uh, benefit. And uh, the first ones naturally murmured. And you know the answer of Jesus. It is the parable set by Jesus. Am I not free to do as I wish with my own money? Are you envious because I am generous? Thus the last will be the first and the first will be the last. Hallelujah. You know another parable, parable of the wedding feast. Many were invited, but the people who were invited had no time. Some of them said they had to work in the field, others had to go to computer or um, um, pornography, they were busy, some were married, they said no time, no time for the, uh, uh, for the banquet. And the Lord said, go and call those who are in the streets. Those who are on the highways and byways, cut them, let my hall be full. And when the Lord came, the hall was full. Except one, all had the opportunity to share the banquet. The one who had no wedding garment had to be pushed out. And that wedding garment shows the purity of life. Yes, dear friends, the invited guests in that parable are we Christians. We are invited to kingdom of God and to salvation by baptism. But as those who are baptized have no time for the Lord and the kingdom of God. And for us, many others whom we consider are outside the church, outside the kingdom of God, may have time to meditate on God. What is eternal life? Very clearly we read in Matthew, sorry, in John chapter 17, verse 3. Eternal life is to know Jesus Christ and his Father. I've seen many Hindus, many Muslims simply saying, Kartave, my Lord, in Malayalam they say, Kartave. I've seen many people saying, oh, God is my Father. Although officially the Muslims don't call God father and also Hindus never call God father they call Bhagavan that means a uh, uh, powerful God but they have heard it from the Christians who call Jesus Lord and God father I'm sure everyone in the world have heard about Jesus heard the Holy Bible through direct preaching through the videos and through televisions and uh, many other evangelization programs. I don't think there's a single one anywhere who does not hear, who I don't heard about Jesus. But it is true because of their environments, although they knew that salvation come to Jesus, they were not able to receive baptism. Now, are only baptized served? I just to bring to you just one or two passages from the Holy Bible. Romans, Chapter 2, verse 7. Eternal life to those who seek glory, honor, and immortality through perseverance in good works. Hallelujah. Those who persevere as good people, those who do 
good works and persevere in that, yes, will have eternal life. Hallelujah. There are many Hindus. We know many uh, Muslims who live a better, righteous, holy life than some of the Christians who are officially baptized and living in the church. It's a truth. And we read the same chapter, verse 12 onwards. All who sin outside the law will also perish without reference to it. And all who sin under the law will be judged in accordance with it. For it is not those who hear the law who are just in the sight of God. Rather, those who observe the law will be justified. For when the Gentiles, who do not have the law by nature, observe the prescriptions of the law, they are a law for themselves, even though they do not have the law. They show that the demands of the law are written in their hearts, while their conscience also bears witness, and their conflicting thoughts accuse and even defend them. On the day when, according to my gospel, God will judge people's hidden works through Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, officially they may not be baptized. They may not be practicing the church or sacramental life. But in the heart, they are living according to God's will. Jesus said very clearly, it's not those who call Lord, Lord, who will enter the kingdom of God, but those who do God's will. Matthew 7, 21. All of you know it. What is God's will? 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 3. This is the will of God, your holiness. I know many Christians and uh, Muslims and Christians, Muslims and Hindus, who live a holy life. That means they don't know the Ten Commandments, perhaps. They are not keeping literally the Ten Commandments or the commandments of the church. But to the dictator of their conscience, they are practicing it. But there are many Christians or Catholics who hear and who are abiding by law through baptism and other sacraments, but not living that life. Yes, here we are to examine whether salvation is only for Christians or not. But as when we go to heaven, we may find a good number of Muslims and Christians in heaven. Yes, in my experience with the souls in purgatory, also in my experience of heaven, I can tell you very honestly, I've seen many non-Christians there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, I see non-Christians in purgatory. They could not receive the baptism. And the priest in purgatory or priest from heaven come and baptize them. Hallelujah. Yes, because the power to forgive sins given to priests, the Lord said, whatever you bind here on earth shall be bound in heaven. That power, faculty, we call it, is not only restricted to earth. Nowhere it is said, a priest cannot absolve the sins of those who passed away. Never. I have never seen any way. Of course, the sacrament is administered to those who are alive. But in spirit and truth, uh, can it not be given to those who passed away? Yes, priests who are in heaven and priests who are in purgatory have the same power and privilege. So if they see souls without being baptized, I believe they can be baptized. And I do it sincerely in my ministry. And I see many non-Christians in heaven. And sometimes you may surprise many of you. But as some of you might ask, then why evangelization? The reason, the surest way to go to heaven is Jesus and his church. And that way is become a part of Jesus through the sacramental life, especially through the Holy Eucharist, where one receives the body and blood of Christ. Jesus said, if you receive my body and eat my body, drink my blood, you will be in me, I'll be in you. Hallelujah. Yes, that is heaven. That is heaven. 
and possessing Jesus is eternal life. 1 John chapter 5, verse 11 and 12. Eternal life is in Christ Jesus. He who possesses Jesus has eternal life. Now, so the Christian way is the way uh, to possess Jesus through prayers and sacraments in the church. Sacraments in the church. Now, those who are outside the church, for us, receiving communion in spirit, especially with the COVID, with the pandemic, many Christians have learned to receive spiritual communion. I know a number of Christian, Hindus and Muslims also do the same. And also, I'm sure you have heard of many who have met Jesus through the Holy Spirit. Nowadays, you find such a, a, a stories or uh, witnesses. Recently, even uh, I heard uh, in Afga Afghanistan, 50 Muslims met Jesus through the Holy Spirit and they're proclaiming Jesus. Same thing happened in Somalia. Many Muslims met Jesus. Simply Jesus appeared uh, himself and told them that he is the savior. And that made them to become uh, Christians. Like that, for us, when one is about to die. This I want to say especially, the moment of death is something very, very sensitive, very emotional, very important. Yes, such a moment, the soul is free. As the soul is going away from the body, uh, he is in a different, she is in a different dimension. No, what you call uh, the embarrassment or bondage of the flesh or the world or the worldly desires. Then he is free to say yes to the Lord. Yes, I can tell you, even when Muslims or Hindus, non-Christians die, they have the same experience. I tell you honestly, I have many testimonies of people who had the near-death experience. That means people who are clinically dead and then came back to life. That they met Jesus. In, and they had to examine their consciences. And they saw their sins. And some of them said, at that moment, they heard the voice of the Lord. I died for you. I save you. I wash away your sins in my blood. I am the only savior, etc. And that was the reason they were able to accept Jesus Christ as Lord at that moment. As I call it, last moment salvation. I see how many testimonies of such people. And also hardened Christians who never had a confession. Hardened Christians who never believed openly. And they were before the Lord. A chance to say yes to the Lord. Yes, that is what he called salvation at the last moment. So, perhaps we may be surprised, shocked to see in heaven people who are so unexpected. Yes, I remember long ago when I was in Kairis Bhavan, a man who was alcoholic, always drunk, beating his wife, throwing the children out of home. He came to attend a retreat. Two or three times he attended my program, but no conversion. And then I said, man, you will go to hell. Hallelujah. You know, uh, in the year 2012, when I had the experience of heaven and hell and purgatory, I saw this man in heaven. Hallelujah. I asked him, my dear man, how are you here? Yes, Father James, you wished me hell, but I'm in heaven. Then he told me his story, what happened. After I have told that, he had an accident and he was in a hospital. There a priest came and he was repenting of his sins and sins were washed and the priest gave a crucifix. He was kissing that crucifix often and he had a privilege of receiving the last sacrament before his death. And after that, uh, he had only a few days in purgatory because all his sufferings of 17 years on his bed he offered with the Christ Jesus for his own sanctification and sanctification of others. Hallelujah. Yes, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, when we suffer with the Christ here on earth, our purgatory is lessened. Purgatory becomes small. Uh, and we say 
uh, in the Catechism of the Catholic Church. We learn like this. I just read that passage to you. Catechism of the Catholic Church, number 848. Those who, through no fault of their own, do not know the gospel of Christ or his church, but who nevertheless seek God with a sincere heart and moved by grace, try in their actions to do the will as they know it through the dictates of their conscience. Those two may achieve salvation. Although in ways known to himself, God can lead those who, through no fault of their own, are ignorant of the gospel, to that faith without which it is impossible to please him, the church still has the obligation and the sacred right to evangelize all men on earth. Hallelujah. Yes, also we have heard there are three kinds of baptism. Baptism by blood, baptism by desire, and baptism by water, which we Christians are received here on earth. And baptism by desire. There are so many uh, Hindus and Muslims who are baptized in desire, although not out, outwardly not uh, baptized. You know, church has two dimensions. One is interior, invisible, a charismatic, led by the Holy Spirit. The other is institutional, and it is visible. Yes, we must know there are more believers, more those who have attained salvation in the invisible church, the non-institutional church, than perhaps those who are in the institutional church. Hallelujah. As St. James said, don't be just hearers of the word of God, be doers of the word of God. So, my message to Christians who are listening to me is, don't be envious if you see Christian, Muslims or Hindus going to heaven. And don't be proud, thinking that heaven is only for us, for Christians. No, heaven is for all. And God wants that all go to heaven. Maybe by the baptism by desire. Anonymous Christians. There are many anonymous Christians in India. In China. All over the world. Yes. Do you think that they will go to hell? Definitely no. We should not be sad. God's salvation is for all. He did not come to send people to hell. And we can see if they had uh, ignorance. Just now we heard those who did not know the gospel. That means ignorance. You know, what Jesus did on the cross, he prayed. Uh, his prayer is known to all of us. Father, forgive them. They know, know, know what they do. Luke 23, 34. He was praying on the cross for the people who did not know the gospel. Ignorant people. And people who did not know the law, the commandments. Yes, he was praying for them. Yes, uh, don't think that prayer was only for those who are persecuting Jesus on the cross. No, it was prayer for all those who commit sin without knowing it. We know there are many people who commit sin without the knowledge of it, without the awareness of it, uh, and without consenting to it, without knowing the consequence of it. And all such people may find refuge, forgiveness, salvation in Christ Jesus. So, uh, we know in the Acts of the Apostles, for example, the Holy Spirit was given to Cornelius and family. They were not Christians. They became Christian later after receiving the Holy Spirit. So, Holy Spirit is not just a monopoly of Christians. No. It is through the Holy Spirit, Christians become Christians. You must know that. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit is showered on Hindus and Muslims and other people in other religions a large number on these days. Hallelujah. I'm sure many of you know, many Hindus, many Muslims go around giving the testimonies of their experience of the Holy Spirit and of Jesus and their new life. So, also we read in the Catechism of the Catholic Church, very clearly saying, 1,257, it is true, baptism is the true way, honest way to go to heaven. But, the Lord can 
the Lord God can save people without baptism. Although through the baptism and sacraments, salvation is connected, the Lord is not connected to the Sabbath and to the sacraments. Hallelujah. That means Jesus can save people outside the church and outside sacraments. Hallelujah. I'm sure some of you know it, but I was highlighting because many people ask me this question, whether Hindus and Muslims will go to heaven. Yes, they are in heaven, I tell you. So, to all people who are listening to me, whether you are Christians or Muslims or Hindus or people who belong to any religion, uh, know one thing, salvation always comes through Jesus Christ. And when you know Jesus Christ, he is the Savior. If you accept him in your heart, yes, or call on his name sometimes, that will be enough for salvation. And uh, if you are not officially baptized, uh, don't think that you will go to hell. Jesus came to save you. Maybe now, maybe at the moment of death, yes, there will be a chance for you to appear before Jesus who died for you. He's the only one who died for you taking all your sins on his body. Nobody else. So he wants to save all. So at the moment of death, whether Christian or Muslim or Hindu, Jesus will be there. I'm sure you have heard of the apparitions in Garabandal. The thing that one day, uh, uh, God will appear as crucified in the air. And all the people will repent and call on his name and find salvation. That is their expectation. The missionaries say that it will happen. Yes, it will happen perhaps. I don't say that it is a dogmatic truth. But I'm saying for each one of you and me, he will appear. And for Christians, he has already appeared. In every mass, every sacrament, they see the death of Christ. And they have a moment, they have a chance uh, to be one with him, to possess him and to possess salvation. And then go smoothly to heaven. But others surely will have a chance uh, at any moment of your life uh, to see the Lord who is crucified for you and find salvation. So think about this message and keep it in your heart. May God bless all of you, both Christians and non-Christians. Eternal life is knowing Christ and his Father. So close your eyes. I pray for you and give a small blessing. Lord Jesus, look at these people who listen to my talk. Many of them are living according to your will, a holy life. Many of them have the, the garment of salvation, garment of purity. If not, Lord, give them a garment of purity so that at any moment of life, they may find themselves in God's presence, holy and acceptable. Now, Lord Jesus, I pray through Jesus and the church, the whole world may be saved. Maybe to the institutional church or to the invisible church. Yes, Lord. I bring all these people to your second heart through the prayers, intercession of Mary, our good mother. Now, my children, my people, I bless you, I sanctify you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah.